And those are the those uh, stack the black box. Uh, those are basically uh, patient side of the color. So and <coughs> let me see if I put this on the. Uh, so this uh, this area uh, must be the social area. So, and those are the, the each each black box is a person has died of color. So at the time uh, at time this occurred, that's actually before even Louis Pasteur. It is an experiment to show most of the infection disease is caused by my, microbial things. So people don't even know uh, uh, small living things exist. Uh, so it's hard for a physician at that time to say how, how did this epidemic, uh, well, epidemic occur. Uh, but many people think this is just some uh, uh, bad air, evil spirit of things are spreading around. I, so, so most physicians, actually, uh, some people got it right for the wrong idea. Something they, they, they will say, if you wash things, clean yourself, it, it can help. It does, because, because that's better hygiene, not because you wash out the you <laughs> uh, well, <laughs> uh, so, Yeah. Well, uh, my, I guess we could uh, help, and they will think this is indeed caused by evil. <laughs> so, uh, but then John Snow, uh, the John Snow, who is John Snow? Uh, there should be a picture. Oh, no, that's a reverend. Uh, I just found a picture of John Snow somewhere uh, in the. In the video, so there's a oh here, there's a jump to the picture. Yeah. So, yeah. so it's, it's actually sad if you read his biography, uh, you realize he actually passed away soon after this. Uh, apparently, a little work. So, but he's actually people call a uh, scientist doctor. So he actually. It's not a, in, in old days, the physicians, they don't have medical school. It's almost like an apprentice. It's like a, you have a master, then you have an apprentice. It's almost like a Jada. <laughs> so, but, uh, but John Snow uh, is credited as a science, scientist uh, physician. So, so what he come up with is, uh, he come up with uh, this map, I, I give you this map. Uh, well, if you if you if you look at a map, uh, what can you see? I mean, basically, this is how he concludes how the outbreak uh, of cholera started. And you have the same thing in front of you. And what can you conclude? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. I guess it makes it working in this room. I mean, nowadays we know uh, follow it all the right time. But he doesn't even know it. All he has is just his mind. Mm -hmm. So when the tie got congested, yeah. 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 what is it called? <laughs> 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 what is it called? <laughs> <laughs> my, my daughter always watches Taurus. <laughs> 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 when I see a map, I got this tie. <laughs> 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 Look for the map. I mean, you tell me So basically, that's the map you are looking at now. So, I, if you have a clicker, I have a question for you. So, how is the source of outbreak identified? Uh, 
It's basically based on this map. Uh, in fact, people have a digital height <coughs> map. I put this all the data into a matrix. And if you try to run software to manage on this map, so I, I, I just Googled actually people already done that. Some school, uh, they actually put this into a map. Actually, I, I, uh, I think I'm good to. You, you will be writing the fall, but, uh, but in the fall I will teach a, a, a programming course. So I think I will ask students to just to analyze it and see what uh, <coughs> yeah. uh, the Well, so at the time of John Snow's days, he doesn't even know bacteria exist. So, <laughs> so uh, but he does know chemistry. So. Uh, chemistry uh, developed much. Uh, he does try to analyze the chemical things. So. Let me see. Uh, uh, that's good enough. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, so so I mean, all of you actually. Uh, let me see that I can this one. Yeah, so all of you pick B. So yeah, it's basically cost. Uh, a clustering analysis. Okay. So you have the map in front of you. Uh, <coughs> so I guess uh, I already told you <laughs> kind of this. So he does, most people believe it's bad air or some evil spirit, uh, but Jon Snow didn't know bacteria caused this. And, but he kind of uh, had the you know, intuition is probably the water causing so, so he, he does have this intuition there. So now, uh, let me close this. Uh, close this one. Uh, close this one. Okay. So if you look at this map, uh, this is basically John Snow's map. If you look at the map, you uh, there are water pumps. Uh, this uh, dark dot, those are pump, water pump. So what are those water pump? <coughs> in in the older days, there's no uh, like a, yeah, there's no uh, like high those kind of water running out. The people there's only limited water supply. I mean, most people, even rich people, goes to the water pump on the street and then pump out water. Actually, they don't do that. It's actually some uh, company people usually, I mean, they, they, people pump out the water and deliver the water to people's house, and then people in the house pay them a fee. So <coughs> that's basically how the water are delivered. Uh, in fact, uh, <coughs> let me see. We have a picture here. Uh, yeah, that's. Oh, sorry. Uh, <coughs> Yeah, that's the water pump, uh, uh, one of the water pumps from the 19th century people use. So, <coughs> and those water pumps basically on the street that people pump the water out and then use the bucket or uh, glass or something and fill it with the water. And then you look at the map, you will realize the, so there's a water pump here, water pump here, water pump here. Water pump there. So, so this neighborhood have just one water pump here. Right. And then you will see those are the so those are the people uh, died of cholera. And there's a heavy concentration. Right. So, so those are water pump here. One of them. So the clo the closer uh, the 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 house cl closer to those. So this water pump seems to have a higher incidence of that. Uh, there is actually one anomaly, which is actually very interesting. It's actually related to uh, yeast. If you took Bio 125, we know yeast, yeast is a fermentation like a beer. So there is actually, the, the house actually right next to it is the, is the monastery, and the monks there, none of them got the sick. That's because the monks brew their own beer, they only, they only drink their own beer, not the water. Mm -hmm. And apparently the beer has ethanol, and that 
feel the color. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so there are some annoyed, but there's a good reason why the people didn't get it. So the, the apparently those monks only they take the water from the pump, but they don't drink the water directly. They, they use the water brew beer and then drink the beer. And the ethanol in the beer, I killed. <laughs> <laughs> So basically, this is so John Snow basically plot this on out, put this on the map, and he said that the, the, he actually said the water in this pump is probably contaminated. And how do you how do you stop the spread of this uh, outbreak? Yeah, you just turn off the pump. Yeah, nobody will drink from that pump, and then the disease will stop. That, and in fact, that's what the, the uh, city, uh, the, the city visit turned off the water pump and the big stuff. And just the famous families. <laughs> so, yeah, so, which is, uh, and the, the, the most amazing part, he didn't even know what caused this disease. Uh, <laughs> but he somehow figured out the way to prevent it from happening. And all he did is basically use a statistical analysis. So, and so this is, <coughs> I guess this is probably a no brainer now. Uh, so this will be a, a start of work. Uh, this is the first case of work. Uh, And this is the beginning of what field. Yeah, yeah. So, five, is good enough, I guess. Let, let me see what we can do. Yeah, so I'll, I'll even pick B. Yeah. This is this, this basically the, consider the start of the epidemiology. That's basically, yeah. <coughs> okay. So the now what's how do you draw a conclusion from this like the, the basic idea is something called uh, oops, uh, you have to use something called a p value so anything in statistical analysis what you are concluding <coughs> now you have to have a null hypothesis and then you have an alternative hypothesis and the the diff, the, the, the p uh, Thing to distinguish the null hypothesis, which is the uh, uh, random uh, alternative hypothesis, which is your own theory. The, the, the null hypothesis is basically the world without your own intervention. So if you have a theory and the world runs on its own without your own theory, that's an, always the null hypothesis. Right. So in this case, if, if <coughs> the John Snow basically say, our hypothesis is say, okay, this pump caused the Outbreak. This this pump caused the disease, spread of the disease. That's our alternative hypothesis. hypothesis. Uh, the 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 now will be this pump does not. Right. So basically, the disease caused by bad air spreading around. That's our now hypothesis. And the alternative is, uh, is this pump caused the disease. But how do we distinguish these two? It's basically using a p-value. But how, how is the p-value calculated in this case? And you have the map here. How are we going to calculate the p-value here? Uh, there, there are several ways you can do this. You can either use a pen or you can use a Play-Doh. Uh, <laughs> so <laughs> you, you can, yeah. <coughs> how are you going to calculate the p-value? You know, so you can take some Play-Doh or you can use a pen. Either way, you are <coughs> yeah, the uh, play is probably easier because the pen is hard to erase. So, <laughs> so <coughs> the way I'll do it, uh, uh, so you can just take a, I don't know, tiny little uh, uh, 
Donald Fado considered that's the case, a person will die from cholera. How do we generate the null hypothesis? The null hypothesis is something occur at random, so you just, without looking at it, you drop that one on the map. That's a person, that's a case where that person died of that. Oh, right. I fell off my map. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's probably too high. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you just, uh, without looking at it, just drop it on the map, up, and then, right, so, Right, so uh, unless you, 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 you have a habitual gesture doing that, you, you shouldn't drop on the one single spot, right? <laughs> so, so uh, well, I guess it, it's pretty easy to fall off the map. <laughs> but I made it sure. <laughs> so, but the, the, the point is, if you just drop this on the map, it, you shouldn't just cluster around that pump, that single pump. It should be. Uh, in, in theory, it actually should uniformly distribute with no uh, a single point of time. It should be just randomly spread entirely in this map. You see the one? It's that's called a now. It should be randomly dropped on this map. Right, so, but but how do we calculate significance? So, and then after I drop all this stuff on the map, I know where that pump is. I, I can just measure the distance to this pump and calculate the average distance to that pump. So then, the, then I have this average distance of the case of the pump. Right, so, so and then I can, <coughs> then I can calculate the, so, <coughs> so, uh, right, so basically I can calculate the distribution of the, so all those random cases, they were uh, occurring to a distance to the pump, so they will probably have a distribution there. And then I I can simulate it uh, hundreds of times, and then I have this distribution, average distance. And in the case for the for the Jones case, uh, there must be the distance should be probably here, and then we can calculate the p value. And the p-value must be very small, less than 0.05%. You will know, call that significant. So <coughs> basically, those are the distance, uh, average distance to the the pump cause the disease. At average distance. Usually, we put the bar on top and say average distance. So, and you, we calculate all that, and that's the actual observation. We, we, we simulate all this. Right? You, we can, uh, if, you, if you want to behave like a computer, you can simulate it a hundred times, calculate this and simulate it. <laughs> then you can have a, a histogram, a plot. Right? And then we also know the, 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 the real case. Right? Every black dot is there. So then we ca calculate that distance again. We put down this. Here it should be very, very close. That the actual case is very close to the pump. Should be here, and then this area underneath uh, uh, the, 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 the histogram, the curve. That's the p value, and the, the p value uh, in most cases less than one out of twenty point zero five is significant. And if you, if many of you probably want to go to a healthcare. Uh, field, and this you should remember this in your heart, actually, uh, almost out of second nature. <laughs> so basically, what's the random, what's non-random? How how do can you tell what's significant, non-significant? So that's basically how the the p-value is calculated um, to, to, uh, used to estimate the clustering effect. Uh, <coughs> Uh, it's, I, I guess if you, if you think of, look at this map, human intuition going to just tell you something occurred in those very, very concentrated uh, places, right? So, so it, yeah, uh, I also found the human intuition. The, all those statistics going to make sense, help us to re, 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 re convince ourselves about that intuition. My, my guess is John Snow must already, he, he, you can just look at this map and know something 
what has gone around is punk. But somehow we need to find some uh, scientific way to prove our intuition is correct. <laughs> so that's uh, so so in in, in a way uh, uh, we are just to convince ourselves again. <laughs> so form of matter. In, in, in fact, most of the maths or whatever science discovery, if it if it doesn't make sense intuitively, you probably want to think again, to make sure whether <laughs> that is the case or not. Sometimes, it, uh, if it's really counterintuitive, it often probably a Nobel Prize discovery. <laughs> it does happen, but doesn't happen very often <laughs> in this case. Yeah. If, if it's really uh, completely uh, revolutionary. Uh, against all the knowledge you have known, it, it does happen, but it doesn't happen that often. Okay. okay. <coughs> so, yeah. So, this is basically, uh, oh, I'm already jumping ahead on my side. So, basically, the, <coughs> the map basically offers a way for us to do, uh, use some formal way, like the, the statistical method to see to compare the now hypothesis uh, and uh, the alternative hypothesis. The alternative hypothesis is always out of theory. If you want to prove your <coughs> idea, your idea should be alternative. <coughs> and the the universe without our idea is the now hypothesis. That's basically it. Yeah. And it shouldn't be the other way around. If the universe with our idea is already the now, then most likely you will accept that now. <laughs> so that's uh, if you think of point zero five is the alternative, you, and ninety five percent you will accept your own, your own idea is probably not good. <laughs> so that's, if you put it the other way around, ninety five percent you will you will accept your own theory. That's kind of problematic. So. Okay. <clears throat> So basically, this is what the uh, epidemiology uh, started. Uh, so <coughs> there will be. Uh, I, I look at. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure whether this is closer to the end of semester. Uh, almost a third of you didn't complete the uh, Moodle assignment, so I, I so I uh, extended the deadline again. <laughs> yeah, under the previous one. Uh, so I, I extend the deadline just just to remind you. Uh, uh, I mean, <laughs> so it it's not you. You just need to put probably half an hour to get it done. So. Wait, Dr. Chen, what are you talking about? You said the date for. I extended the date of the chapter assignment. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so yeah. Uh, I, I know some of you, I I know for sure some of you here. Haven't done it when I look at it uh, this morning, so but I just remind you: if, if you spend another half hour, you can finish. Uh, <coughs> okay. So, so I think so. Since basically, since it's a start, epidemiology is basically tells us quantitative analysis is really the key for epidemiology. But nowadays, there's also something called molecular epidemiology. So, because of those uh, uh, DNA technologies, so we can also do, uh, we can do a lot of uh, sequencing, like phylogeny also becomes a problem. Yeah. But, you know, phylogeny in a way is also quantitative analysis of a uh, uh, symbol. So, it, 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 it's just another quantitative method. So. Okay. <coughs> Uh, hmm. So uh, I guess I still need to go through some terminology here. So, uh, since it's a new thing. So chronic infection, acute infection. So if that's the case, uh, which pathogen are more virulent or lethal? That's probably quite obvious. Uh, the, so it should be the acute. Uh, <coughs> this is an interesting question. So the uh, a spread of disease can be uh, epidemic, pandemic, or endemic. Uh, okay. So 
that's the map. Uh, let me go, uh, which one is endemic? Uh, this is A, this is A, this is a B, this is a C. Which one do you think is endemic? Endemic means, means it's a, a occurring <coughs> in a population. So there'll be uh, <coughs> endemic, epidemic, pandemic. Do we pick which one is which? And which one is endemic? The so yellow one. Oh wait, this is like yeah, yellow A, B, C, D. Blue yeah. is B. This is A, this is B, that's a C. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But if you think about it, <coughs> it's basically come back to this map again. Uh, <coughs> Now this is epidemic, right? This is how epidemic looks like. Mm -hmm. You have something occur, and it's it almost like a, right explosive, right? So, right. So it's basically look. This map is basically look at this. One. So endemic should be should be just opposite to this. Right, right. That should be yeah. is basically uh, the now hypothesis, okay. And this is epidemic just like this time. And if you if we see everywhere uh, high frequency that become pandemic. Uh, pandemic happen well at, at least in recorded uh, history it doesn't happen very often but it happened a few times uh, in, in like uh, 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 1918 to the, the flu pandemic, that's like a Q. Quite a lot. It does happen, and also the European plague. Right? So it does happen, but haven't happened that often. But when it happens, it's quite a, uh, dramatic. <laughs> Yeah, so the key is basically random versus non-random. Uh, endemic will be like we throw things at almost okay. uniformly on the map without a single, well, usually without a single center of uh, explosion, explosive case uh, thing. But if there's an epidemic, that means there's a, well, if you think there's a bomb kills something, there must be a center <laughs> where the bomb drops. So usually there's an origin of the case. Okay, uh, this is something interesting. Uh, what is this? Uh, uh, let me see. Uh, uh, let me give you a, a few answers. Uh, give you choice. Uh, uh, how do I open this? Uh, uh, I'm going to say, uh, uh, so this is the SARS uh, case we, we discussed before. I'm going to say A is uh, endemic, and B epidemic again, uh, C is pandemic. Uh, okay. This is the uh, SARS. Oh, uh, sorry. That's it. <laughs> certainly make news because it had the potential to become pandemic. Mm -hmm. So that, that's, uh, yeah. but this kind of, ex uh, basically, you, you have a source of the, the disease and then start to spread, that's epidemic. And then because of the 
this is airborne, so it had a very strong potential that you can't get that. But it didn't. That's, there's actually a, 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 a fortuity to a, a factor for that. So, <coughs> so <coughs> this is the swan flu. Uh, if we do this again, so this is a swan flu. Uh, if, uh, when swan flu occurs, it's probably already at its down. It was in high school. Uh, oh. It was like junior year, senior year of high school. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's, it's, but this is the swan flu species. Yeah. Do you think this is uh, endemic, epidemic, or pandemic? Uh, pandemic? I think it's pandemic. I'll give you a trick question. Yeah. In fact, it is a tricky question because I, if you think about Swan, who. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I guess automatically when we say epidemic, endemic, pandemic, we always talk about human beings. But in fact, uh, every animal or even plant or bacteria, they can't have a disease. So if you, if you put your view in a different angle, the answer often is different. <laughs> so, uh, Let me see the answer. Um, um, most of you choose pandemics. I guess it doesn't look like a pandemic. Yeah, if you if you look at the map. But uh, the thing is, it's probably endemic in the pig. <laughs> so for pig, it's it's not big deal. Right? They, they have the flu just like we have the flu always. So it's, it's not big deal for them. It's, so it's really uh, 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 endemic in the pig. So. <laughs> It depends on which which uh, from which angle you look at this. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> okay, but for human, it doesn't look like a pandemic. <coughs> so it's a it, it so basically I, I this is just my view though. It, it was the endemic disease, and then uh, there's an the epidemic, and then a pandemic of 2009, I guess. Uh, but right now, after the outbreak, it, it's most likely also an endemic disease in human too. After the outbreak, it's actually very hard to get rid of it. So, in 2009, I guess you, you, you are still in high school. Yeah, so, so, this is 2009. So, so, so when, it, the, when the outbreak occurs, it, it, it is a pandemic, but since we don't see it allowed, it's actually already become endemic. It just uh, happened to have a low frequency, but it actually didn't disappear from, didn't disappear. It just uh, occurred at a low frequency, and we are not paying too much attention to it anymore. At least the newspaper not paying too much attention to it anymore. So, yeah. <coughs> okay. Here is a very interesting question, but at least related to the lab we did uh, yesterday. Uh, can you wasn't here yesterday? Oh, I thought you were. an airplane coming back here. Oh, you are joining the pandemic. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you become a carrier or something. Sorry. Oh, no. <laughs> 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 okay. okay, but why, why start? Uh, why a swine flu uh, become a uh, endemic or, uh, or pandemic? Or pandemic? Either way, it's actually something, but not SARS. Yeah. Uh, I guess I didn't give you too much choice, also because I, uh, I have a hard time to come up with other answers. <laughs> uh, gee, how do I open this? Uh, okay. 
Oops, sorry. Uh, If, if you, uh, yeah, pandemic. it should be pandemic. The question should be about pandemic. Oh, I got the. <laughs> okay, that's it. My my own view is the SARS basically killed the code. Yeah, so so when 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 people got SARS, they are mo most likely just died. But if you got swine flu, you actually have a pretty latent that you can still take flight and travel <laughs> vacation. <laughs> but at all the meantime, the, the, the swine flu will get to spread. But the SARS, uh, people usually just pass away pretty quickly. And then that's it just eliminated its own chance of passing the virus. So that's actually, if you think about that, we did the simulation Wednesday. So we, have, we, we compared three viruses. The most virulent one kill a lot of hosts, but it also stops itself in, in the process. Mm -hmm. So the most of lethal viruses, although it's scary to kill people, that way it's not easy for them to spread around. But it's, it's the, so but then on, on the other hand, the most of mild viruses they also have hard time to spread around because when, for the mild virus they also have had the hard time to even uh, to be spread from one host to, a, to uh, another. It's hard for them to spread. So the optimal strategy for the virus purpose, if they want to dominate the, the world, they, they have to balance how how much they can to kill people and how much they want to keep you alive to carry them around. <laughs> so so the, the optimal strategy for the virus to, 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 to be the dominant species. <coughs> okay. Uh, Okay, so <coughs> endemic species often have a low mortality rate. Uh, where we, I guess we did a lab yesterday, so it's kind of a, not entirely in sequence, but yeah, it's, it's similar sequence. Uh, but they need to become endemic, often they, they, they need to be spread around. Too. Basically, uh, there's, here's another few vocabulary. There, there are carriers, so individual uh, with uh, with infection, but not uh, obvious phenotype that's carrier. Mortality, the death, morbidity in the disease, including both uh, uh, fatal and non-fatal cases. Uh, I think I will just jump over some of the terminology, since some of you have already. Here's an interesting case. Uh, this is a <coughs> uh, encephalitis in California, in the US. And this is actually a uh, season. So, if based on the season, this is another pattern analysis, right? So this is not a spatial, this is not the distribution on the map. Oh. This is not a distribution on the map anymore. <laughs> this is a distribution on, uh, 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 along uh, a time, along the, uh, 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 based on the time distribution. What can you draw from this distribution? Uh, oh, uh, I didn't offer the... So, this is a spatial distribution. That is a, with a temporal distribution. That's a distribution of, uh, across time. Based on that one, what can you draw? Uh, so I have a question. Yes. Oh, that's a very good question. Uh, sorry. The, uh, the peak. The peak is in the Yeah, the peak is in the summer. Can I ask my question now? Yes. 
Okay. Sure. So, um, what, like, just for clarification, can you talk about what it's about? Yeah, what is the type of The problem is by telling you more, you probably already give you the answer. <laughs> so, but it's also a book question. You, you, can, you can Google. Well, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Google? Maybe you want yeah, to share yeah. with the. What? I was saying, yeah, that's what I'm looking at now. Yeah, but I thought maybe you wanted to share with the rest uh, of the <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Oh, man. So this actually also tells you something about the disease, how the disease spread. And I mean, if you think about what, what are the things are seasonal, and this is shouldn't be water anymore, right? Allergy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, allergy is seasonal, right? So I mean, there's also a main cause of it. It's not infectious disease, but certainly it is seasonal. Yeah. And the cause of that clearly is also seasonal, mm -hmm. right? So then you, but this is a, 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 a disease which is a seasonal. It tells you something how the disease is spread. Right? Uh, if, if you Google uh, in cipher like this, what do you see? Uh, I mean, you, you will see. Uh, nine, okay, I have nine. I guess that's good enough. Uh, nine. Uh, A, virus are more lethal in summer. C, transmission is uh, Uh, oh, um, the D, actually, uh, uh, my intention, the B is correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. B? Yep. Yeah. How? Yeah. How can I not do that? And what? so far, I've seen meningitis. Oh, because it's host host? Because it's a bacteria? Right, if it's host to host, then you shouldn't be seeded on it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Can you explain what I have to raise the bacteria? Yeah, the bacteria is mosquito. So a vector is a mosquito that contracted to everything. So even if it doesn't have to be a mosquito, yeah. it could be like person to person contact. So it kind of could almost be D because meningitis is spread a lot in school. So yeah. what, uh, C, C, C is definitely not right. If it's human to human, in winter time probably more prevalent. Right. Yeah. But it has so to be something like in If it's human to human direct contact, winter time is probably more prevalent than summer. Um, yeah. I mean, you can get it. What? I said you can get it from another human. Yeah, yeah. If if, if it's human, yeah. But in this case, the 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 main uh, transmission is the uh, mosquito. Oh, so yeah. during the summertime, that's when the vector right, right, right. is more prevalent. Yeah. And yeah. Okay. And also, human uh, more real less yeah. <laughs> power oh, too. More so <laughs> it's easier for mosquitoes. <laughs> <coughs> okay, so let's see, uh, if I close this, move this away. <coughs> okay, so yeah, so the the way transmission occurs, they are direct host to host, they are indirect host to host. The indirect host are basically require a vector like a mosquito or uh, water like all uh, what are the things? Uh, pigs, air so <coughs> actually air probably should be called uh, since flu is taken to the air should be called uh, but object like those uh, ball handle, donut those, those should be called a vector mm -hmm. sorry <coughs> so, <coughs> uh, if you look at this map, which one do you think should be uh, uh, a host to host? Which one should be, uh, there is something called, a, oh, maybe I should go back to uh, previous. So, 
the, the source of the outbreak, there is also a common source, like the water, right? That's a common source. There's a, if it's direct uh, uh, host to host, to host there's a, that's another, uh, uh, what's the example? HIV, I guess, would be an example of this. So, and then, so this is a uh, out, uh, outbreak of the two disease. Which one do you think is the direct uh, host to host? That one. The, yeah, the, I heard the green. Yeah, the green one should be if it's direct host to host. If one person got disease, it need to take time to contact with another person. Yeah. So it's it, but on the other hand, if it's uh, say a source of water, and then everybody drink that water, and then all of a sudden it explosive. So this should be like just like the London London uh, water coloring case be like this, and direct uh, host to host would be like this. That said, uh, this one will be actually easy to manage. As long as you identify where that source is, you can you eliminate that source, that this disease will be controlled. The direct host to host, uh, you have to isolate each host. Actually, that's, so this is much difficult to, to contain, actually. Yeah, even though it's going to uh, take time to build up, but it's actually hard to stop. So the, one of the best way, one of the most effective way to stop the infection disease is the uh, immune vaccine, vaccination. Uh, the way for vaccination to, to occur is basically to stop the transmission process, the so-called herd immunity. So uh, <coughs> basically the, uh, we use, uh, if this semester we, we are short of two weeks, so we don't have time to go through some exercise. Uh, I used to uh, have students do a computer simulation uh, with <laughs> to <laughs> how the did this, <laughs> but uh, I don't. Yeah, this semester uh, is not time to do this anymore. So <clears throat> basically, if uh, the email it, uh, if. It, from the simulation we did uh, yesterday, once someone got a virus and need to recover, it had the immunity, right? <coughs> and then the disease will be stopped. But so the vaccine basically jump that infections that directly provide immunity to people. So and then just stop the path. So it, it, it's basically based on transmission principle. And if you think about this uh, <coughs> kind of a uh, illustration here. Uh, the, if we have enough people to have a, a vaccine shot, and <coughs> it basically stops the chance of a virus from the infected people to other people. It basically decreases the transmission probability. So it's actually, you can actually uh, use mathematical model to predict how many people should be vaccinated in order to prevent a spread of an infection disease. There's a threshold over there. And that's, uh, and, and that's often is also the target for and most of the uh, WHO. They, they, will, so they will say how many people should get the uh, immune shot. There's a number there. They got this number from this kind of simulation or mathematical model. Uh, below that number, basically, if there's a low number, this will be blue, this will be the disease can still be spread around. So this is a, this is a mathematical model that we're taking. Uh, <coughs> in fact, uh, it, uh, uh, it also depends on, uh, on the social interaction. So in old days, people travel by uh, horses, carriages. So the paths uh, are also limited. In nowadays, people travel by planes. Uh, so, so the, nowadays it's much harder because the transmission here is much stronger than the old days. So it, it, the infection disease are more, uh, pandemics are more scary now also because of the, the traveling path, social network path. If you think about the, 
there's a word, there's a term called a small word principle. So everyone uh, in this world is only separated by a, a six degree of separation. Mm -hmm. So a virus only need to take six jumps to spread all over the world. That's basically what this means. <laughs> so if you want to stop virus, you have to study the first two or three other. Beyond that, it's almost like a content that will be occupied. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. Uh, I think that's uh, yeah, that's most much uh, the, the, the key things I have covered. So I have a, also have a Jeopardy, but I don't think we have time to uh, go through it. But here, here's some important things to cover. Endemic, epidemic, pandemic, basically based on the uh, clustering pattern. Carriers, reserves, mortality, morbidity. Mortality is a bad one. Morbidity would increase or not. Zoonosis means that the virus uh, uh, have a rather role in animal. Uh, vaccine provides herd immunity. Uh, transmission uh, have a host to, there are host to host or a vector uh, mediated transmission. Okay. Uh, I guess that's all of it. Actually, uh, we have some time left. I need another volunteer to proctor the lecture evaluation. So we did it for the lab. Yeah, so the, the school provider need a separate evaluation for the lecture as well. Because we have two registration now. Yeah. So uh, okay, thank you. So all right, I, I need my Play-Doh back. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>